Hey, time to go over chapter 24, the conclusion, our last chapter. So in this chapter, it talks about how, um, well, you should know that from the end of last chapter, Dimsdale dies on the scaffolding. We read the whole account of how he calls Hester and Pearl to go up on the scaffolding with him, how he, um, sorry, my eyes are bothering me big time today, allergies. Um, he calls them to go up there and he admits to everything and he tears away the the his clothing and shows them that he's got his own scarlet letter and says, you know, I have had this and you haven't shunned me, but yet you've shunned her and all that that we talked about yesterday. So that just happens. Now in this chapter, it talks about how there's after a couple of days and everybody's had time to process it all, there's all these stories coming out about it. Um, like everybody saw the same thing, but there are multiple stories about what happened. And I think Hawthorne's trying to make a commentary about, you know, society and about people and how we embellish and we make up things. And, um, but also that it depends on your own life experiences of how you perceive things as well. So, um, some people, there's two main, main groups here. The first group is the group that says, yes, I saw the Scarlet Letter. Yes, he confessed. And in that, but even in that group, there are, you know, diff, there are three different stories about how the letter got there. So some people say, oh yeah, the letter, it started the day that Hester had her moment on the scaffolding. He was carving this in himself and it was his own penance and, and all of that. The second one is that people say, oh no, no, no. It came because of Roger Chillingworth, like because of his poisonous medications, because of his magic, he caused it to appear with his revenge and his evilness. And the third explanation is that it gnawed its way out of his heart until it was visible. The guilt coming out of his heart. So three explanations of how that letter got there. Then there's the second group. And the second group says, I never looked away. I was there. I watched the whole thing. I never looked away. I didn't see anything. I never saw any letter on his chest. Also, he never said anything about being in connection with Hester. Like, I don't know what you people are saying. He never said that. He never connected himself. What he did is that he went up there. He knew he was dying. And so he used his life as a parable. And even in his dying breath, he was teaching us continuing to be our minister, continuing to teach us through this parable to talk about how we are all sinners. Hawthorne makes a commentary here that says that this shows that, you know, people will see and hear what they do or don't want to see or hear. Okay. Um, even though the proof was right there, even though we were told everything that went down, these people still say, no, 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 no. It was just a parable. It was just a story that he used for teaching. So then it goes on to talk about how Chillingworth was the one that was the, the biggest change. When Dimsdale dies, he's got nothing to live for. He has turned his whole life into one bitter um, quest for revenge. And so now that Dimsdale is gone. He he has nothing. He has nothing to strive for. And it says that he just basically shrivels up and withers away and whatever. And within a year of Dimsdale dying, Chillingworth is dead. Nothing to live for. Um, the interesting thing about this, um, it, there's a lot of commentary, and if we were together, I would talk about this on page 178, about how love and hate, at their very essence, are the same thing. And there's some some things that Hawthorne says, some commentary about it, but um, just a, a thought for today for you to toss around in your head. Our love and hate, do they come from the root, at the very root, are they the same? 
do do they have that that where they come from do they have that in common um i'm not going to focus on it today though so back to Chillingworth, he dies and the interesting thing is that when they read his will he has left everything everything he owns he's left it to pearl not even his kid he doesn't leave it to hester even though she is his wife um does the town ever find out that Chillingworth was her husband i don't know that's never clarified but regardless i think it's a huge um a huge thing that Chillingworth has left his fortune to pearl the child that isn't his the child that is conceived by his wife through an affair um the child that he has no contact with personally i think that's commentary on on how she is the innocent in this situation you know hester has committed her sins dimsdale has committed his sins chillingworth has committed his sins pearl she didn't ask to be brought into this she just was and she's the innocent here and chillingworth leaves his fortune to her because of this she becomes the richest heiress in the entire new world and all of a sudden people's opinions about her change and they talk about how oh if she had stayed that um when she was old enough to get married that you know everyone would have wanted to be to marry her um because of her fortune because of her money and even the strictest Puritans, the ones that have looked down on her, the ones that were so cruel to her and Hester, the same children that were calling names and throwing mud would be the ones that are trying to win her hand in marriage. So another commentary on people and um, the hypocrisy. Okay. Um, but they don't stay. Hester and Pearl disappear. Um, there's no definite location of where they went. Um, of course, there's stories, but um, they never, no one ever hears from her. It's not like they write letters back to anyone. Um, but the story of the Scarlet Letter stays strong because now these are people that we experienced all this and then they disappeared and no one knows where they are. And so the story of the Scarlet Letter is still huge. And the story of the scaffolding is huge because what scandal that your minister died right here confessing his sins and the the eeriness of the cottage so the cottage sits empty no one moves into it um but it it's it's just that creepy place it it um has all of the the stories being told about it however one day as some kids were playing a tall woman in gray comes back to the cottage and unlocks the door and walks in. And as she walks in, there's a hesitation before she re-enters this life and she turns and the children see the scarlet letter on her chest. And sure enough, Hester has returned. She comes back to her little cottage. She comes back to the town. She still has the A on. Pearl is not with her, but she resumes her old life. No one tells her that she has to wear the A, but she does. She keeps it on. Um, on page 179, it says, here had been her sin, here had been her sorrow, and here was to be her punishment. So she resumes her old life. She wears the letter. The letter is no longer looked at with scorn and bitterness, but it's more of, um, it's something that people sorrow over that, oh, this is her life. They look at it with awe. And they start to look at it with reverence. Um, people bring their problems to her. Instead of coming and criticizing her, women come and talk to her. She seems to become an advisor and a counselor. Um, and she, it says on page 180, she comforted and counseled them as best she might. She assured them of her firm belief that at some brighter period, the truth would be revealed and everyone would be in the ground of mutual happiness. Um, this is how she spends her life. And finally, 
Um, finally, when she dies, it talks about how she is buried next to, um, at the King's Chapel. Um, it was near that old and sunken grave, yet with a space between, as if the dust of the two sleepers had no right to mingle. So when she dies, the people bury her next to Dimsdale with some space in between. And, you know, the, the symbolism of they're still not supposed to be together, and yet they buried them together. And they, they had one tombstone for the two of them. So you see that when you go to a cemetery where they will have one tombstone, it has the husband's name, you know, date of birth, date of death, and it has the wife's name, date of birth, date of death, but it will have just, you know, one stone for the two. And this is what the townspeople have made. But that brings me to a question. Was it the townspeople? So Hester, even though the townspeople never see Pearl again and they don't know where she is or anything like that, Hester receives um, letters, she receives gifts in the mail. Um, the assumption is that these are things that Pearl is sending home to her and they even see her making baby clothes. So the assumption is that this is for Pearl's child. She's making these clothes and sending them to wherever Pearl is. So is it the town that makes this one tombstone or is it Pearl that makes the one tombstone? Um, I really don't know. But it's just a question that I've always had, you know, would the Puritans have, have done this or not? So that is the end of our book, okay? Um, your homework for today. Since you don't have anything else to read, it's time to write. Um, I gave you back on February 26th, I gave you an intro packet of papers through Google Classroom, and it had two documents in it. One was a document about the symbolism of the A. The other was a document about themes. Yesterday, I went back and I looked at those documents because I had asked you to fill them out as you were going through the reading. I told you it would be so much easier to put these things down while you're reading and you find these pieces of evidence than it will be to go back through the book to find them now. However, I only found two people out of both classes that actually completed the charts. So kudos to those two people um, for putting in the time that you were supposed to put in. So for the rest of you, I hope that maybe you took the suggestion of printing it off, having it as a bookmark, and maybe you were handwriting these page numbers and these quotes that relate to the themes. Um, because if you didn't, if you did, then today's homework isn't going to take you long to just type it into the chart that you can find on Google Classroom under the February 26th posting of intro packet. If you didn't and you weren't writing these things down and keeping track of them, you've got some major work to do today. Um, here's the requirement that I want you to do. You're going to go back to that intro packet. Again, it's on February 26th on Google Classroom posting. And you don't have to do the symbolism one. I'm going to let that go for, we'll let the coronavirus eat that one up. Um, but I do want you to go back to that themes paper and I need you to find two quotes that show the theme that is listed on that chart. You have seven themes on there, two quotes minimum in order to get the full points for this. What I want you to do is to put it as, you know, so you've got your theme. Maybe it's the one about lies and deceptions. And you're going to put the chapter number, you're going to put the page number, and you're going to actually write out the quote. So the two of you that actually have your chart filled out, make sure that you go back and, and kind of maybe just adjust your what you have in there so that it shows exactly how I want it. But again, it should say the chapter number, the page number, and the actual quote word for word that you wanted to put into that document to serve as proof 
for that theme. Okay, two quotes, each of the themes means you're going to find a minimum of 14 quotes. If you can find more, I would put more in there. You're going to have another assignment coming up. I'm going to give you two days to do this one. Um, so today is, I don't even know anymore. Today is Wednesday. I'm going to assume that you're working on this Wednesday and Thursday, and I will be back on Friday to give you your next um, assignment. So I will check in with you tomorrow. I will look at your charts to see if you're making progress. And um, tomorrow will just be a work day for this class. And then on Friday, I'm going to assume that that is done. And that's the day that I'm going to check it and give it its points. All right. And then I'll give you your last and final assignment for the Scarlet Letter. Enjoy yourself today. It's supposed to be sunny today, almost like 58 and sunny. I'm going kayaking. Mm -hmm. Got myself a new life jacket. And I'm going to go kayaking today. Maybe I'll send you a video. If you find something fun to do today, send me a video. I'm tired of looking at myself. I'd like to see what you guys are doing. Say hi. Show me something that you've been doing over this crazy, I was going to say break, but it's not really break, this crazy e-learning time. Um, but yeah, so send me a video. That is your participation point for tomorrow is that I get a video or a picture would suffice. Let's just make it a picture, I guess, un unless you feel, you know, really, really into it. But um, I'll send you a video of what I'm doing, and you're going to send me one of what you've been doing. So you got today to prepare for that. I'll see all of you tomorrow.